Hey, happy Thursday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. I'm going to give you the latest updates on not only what's going on with these two storms, plus what is coming right after this, because this pattern is about to imitate itself. If you remember, we have something coming all the way in October, or somewhere around the early 20s, and we have something coming also in November. So I'm going to give you all the latest updates on this video. Now, you see we have the storms going across the southeast. They did have a lot of tornadoes warnings this morning for Florida, and thank God y'all did listen to me about the tornadoes possibly going all night long. We did have them all the way till one, almost two o'clock in the morning and causing damage. Plus we have the storms that's forming in the central plains. We have the high wind warnings, the wind advisories, we have freeze warnings, we have winter storm warnings, winter weather advisories for Wyoming and Colorado for what's going on with that storm. But we have freeze warnings, frost advisories everywhere, a lot of cool temperatures coming down. But what we're about to do is go into this pattern. Now we have Sean over here, you see Sean's not doing anything. We have Invest 94L over here. Now Invest 94L isn't really gonna do nothing neither. It is either gonna turn in this direction are turning that direction a little bit later. One or the other is gonna happen. But we're about to go into this pattern, guys. We're about to have a high pressure setting up right over here in the MDR, and this is gonna revolve everything around just like it does normally this time of year. All these storms go around this direction. So these storms that's going across the southeast is gonna happen again, I will show you. Plus what's coming later down the road is bringing potential formation around the Western Caribbean, and that could spin around as well. Could be weak, could be strong, could just be another group of disorganized thunderstorms just like this, bringing chances for flooding, winds, and tornadoes. So if you've never been here before, make sure you subscribe. I am all year long. Now let's get into the information, guys, because we do have chances for tornadoes for today in both areas, the Central Plains and for Florida. Then this is going to dissipate for Florida as we go in towards tomorrow and be all gone and we have a little section for tomorrow chance for tornadoes so just to go over what you're looking at you can see here with the 12z on the on the h triple r that you have your surface low pressure it was stronger it has starting to weaken down plus you have what's building in the central plains for today and tomorrow now i want you to be aware of this because you're going to see this again and i want you to know when you see this you can imagine it for what it is a group of disorganized thunderstorms rolling through bringing y'all the threats that y'all have been having in the Southeast. Now, the latest information on Invest 94L is literally in about four to five days, it will become Tropical Storm. I believe Tammy is the next name. What's coming towards potentially the U.S. is what's coming after this wave. This wave itself is not the threat. It's all the lift, all the favorable environment that we're about to go into. Now, you can also see as you check for the chance for a tropical depression, literally in six days as Invest 94L goes along, becomes Tammy, goes towards the Lesser Antilles in nine to 10 days. So far, it's shown that it will weaken down. We don't know yet. This could strengthen, this could weaken, but going in that direction, going right into the Atlantic and just slowly dissipating. At the same time, all this energy, all this low pressure is starting to build up around the Central American gyre. That's what it does this time of year. And this is where our next set of storms, just like the last ones, are going to form up around the Eastern Pacific and swing back out to the East Northeast once again. But you can easily see in six days that you have Invest 94L moving to the West. And maybe we'll go northern a little earlier, maybe a little bit later. It's almost on a 50-50 chance on what's going to happen with that as it may go all the way towards Dominican Republic and Haiti before it turns. We can also see here on your potential velocity anomaly that we do have favorable environment, not only for the 20th, we also have it coming later in the 20s. And this is the time that we need to think about something that could form up just like the pattern we're going in now. It could happen in the 20th, but we got a better chance when it's later in October. Now the Euro does see that favorable environment all the way up to the 15th, maybe the 16th. Not really a big deal, guys. But once we go towards later in October, that's the area, that's the time period that seems to be agreeable by GFS and Euro that we have something in our area that could form up. Also, again, in the beginning of November, as we go towards the end of our hurricane season, then we get unfavorable environment, hopefully, for the end of our hurricane season. Now, the one thing that's concerning about Invest 94L, you can see here with the control member of the Euro, literally in eight days becoming a very weak system by Lesser Antilles, staying weak, 
but eventually going around this high pressure where it starts setting up and swinging everything around, we're going to stay in that pattern for a while. And it could strengthen back up and go towards the Bahamas, possibly a strong tropical storm, as maybe it sits there for a while. So we might have to watch that. The next cold front could block it and make it do a weird pattern loop right here. So definitely keep our eyes on this invest. But you can see the next pattern that we're going into. So you can see here with the euro, you have that surface low pressure, you have all them thunderstorms, you have what we're getting in the central plains. As that goes across, and then you can see our next setup as we have Invest 94L comes across and it's very weak right there. Very weak where we start getting some lift building up in the eastern Pacific. This is going to come to the east as well. Now you also see the same thing with the GFS. All that low pressure building up for the U.S. and the southeast. And as we come into this next pattern, maybe something coming again in the Gulf. Doing the exact same pattern right around the 20th, guys. While we have Invest 94L coming into the eastern Caribbean. No big deal out of that. While we still have some more still favorable environment still rolling in our Caribbean, our Gulf, as we go towards the end of October. Remember, it's the 20th and it's the end of October. Both of those dates, according to the GFS, is looking a little favorable. The Euro is agreeing that it's the end of the, the 20s and also the beginning of November. But you can see here with the control member of the GFS that exactly what we see this morning out of Invest 94L is what we see in the control member. It could be stronger and it could be turning a lot sooner, guys. You can also see this on a previous run, the 0Z with the GFS to balloon data, that as we go through all this pattern change that it does become some kind of surface low pressure building up in the eastern pacific right around the 20th and then it comes right through our gulf now don't matter what this pressure is okay what this means right here is just like we see this morning you're going to see at least a group of disorganized thunderstorms coming from the south going to the east northeast just like y'all are seeing in the pattern that we have now. So right around the 20s, we gotta look for this pattern change because it's gonna start coming around again. But we still gotta watch Invest 94L. You can see what the Canadian has it agrees that we'll get your lift in your Central American gyre. This is going towards the Pacific as you go towards the 20th. But the Invest 94L shows strong on the Canadian model. So we do need to watch it. So far, a week is trending. But the control member of the GFS shows this as well, that it could strengthen up and go right out to the north. And this would bring some impacts. So we do need to stay on top of that as well. But remember, when we're in October, this is exactly the pattern that we see that goes on these tropical cyclones. It goes into the Western Caribbean and could easily hit Florida or the Bahamas as it goes out through the east and maybe even a little bit of the southeast. Get hit with these storms, guys. So we do need to watch it. This is our pattern. And the temperatures all in the Gulf and the Caribbean are still very warm waters. So whatever comes in here will still form. Now, when we get these cold fronts, we still have another cold front coming down in the 20s. This will create more shear, more problems, just like we had just now on this system that it kept it weak. And it looks like we could have that same deal. Just be aware this could bring more tornadoes, more damage in winds, more flooding at least. And next one on the list will be Tammy if Invest 94L becomes anything. We have Tammy, Vince, then Whitney, and then we're out of this season's names. Now let's go over to severe weather real quick. I'm glad that y'all heeded my warning because I, I, I did see people saying that, hey, this is, threat's going to stop around 10, 11, maybe 12 o'clock. I told you and showed you this is going to go all night long into the early morning hours. You have this threat, and you did. You had tornadoes around 1 o'clock, a couple of them around 1 o'clock, you had water spouts that turned into a tornado. You had multiple tornadoes after 1 a.m. in the morning. And this was pretty bad. The one by Clearwater I know was a nasty little water spout. This did cause a lot of damage. Now you have more threats for today. And this is going to happen again when we get this next pattern in the 20s. But as of right now, you are in a tornado watch all the way to 3 p.m. this afternoon Eastern Time. So your updates for today, you do have tornado threat and it has increased for both sides. You have 2% and a 5%. So far, here's your cities and states at risk for the tornadoes for today, for Thursday. You also have that wind threat. Both areas, both 5% and 15%. Here's your cities and states at risk. And it's going to be the same area for the hail as well in the central plains. 5 and 15%. Here's your cities and states at risk for the hail. 
Now, National Weather Service has as large hail damage in gusts and a tornado or two are possible today over parts of the central plains. A few tornadoes and damage in gusts still may occur over midday over portions of the northern central Florida. Matter of fact, the latest on NATO cast shows it could go up a little bit more for southern Nebraska for today. Now, for tomorrow, for Friday, remember I showed you all the warm temperatures aloft. This is going to start weakening down, but you do have a chance for tornadoes. You have a 2%. So far, here's your cities in Iowa that is at risk. You see it does have a little bit of northern Missouri and a little bit of western Illinois as well. Plus, you have chances for winds for tomorrow, a 5%. So, so far, here's your season states at risk for the wind threat for Friday. And there is a hail threat right where your tornado threat is also for Friday. Now, National Weather Service says thunderstorms capable of producing isolated damage and winds may occur Friday across parts of the mid-Mississippi Valley and Midwest. Some threat from marginally severe hail and perhaps a tornado or two may also exist across parts of Iowa into northern Missouri and far west central Illinois. Plus Saturday, as this goes out through the east coast, guys, you do have another 5% chance for severe weather. So, so far, here's your cities and states at risk. Now, you can still see these storms are still going the same way. It's going to start dissipating over Florida. Now, it's going to start thinning out right here for you, Florida. And I know it looks like you could have some tornadoes that's going to spin out of that. But it's actually not because you're not going to be in the dew points and enough convection for that to get enough lift to spin up to something super serious. So the, the worst of your storms is going to pass by after around 3 p.m. for today as all that leaves. All the rest of this that goes over after that, I wouldn't even worry about that. Plus, this is dropping a lot of snow, big banding of snow all afternoon for Wyoming and going to western Nebraska. Look at all that snowfall that's coming. That's going all the way into later tonight. Very heavy amounts of snow for western Nebraska. As all this pushes to the east, still going to bring y'all all those damaging winds as you go all day for tomorrow, all afternoon for tomorrow. As that pushes even further, it weakens on down just like I showed you on yesterday. Still bringing a lot of flooding. Also bringing a lot of damaging winds all night long for tomorrow. And then tomorrow afternoon as it moves to the east, it weakens up. And we're picking up 40 and 50 miles per hour in all this orange. 60 in the red. Even getting some 70 in there for southern Minnesota, eastern South Dakota. As it goes all the way to Wisconsin with high 40s. A lot of strong winds going all the way to western Michigan, northern Indiana, and northern Illinois. Plus the southeast is almost done, guys. It's passing through for today all the way to 3 p.m., but it's going to start thinning out by then. But you still have the 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gust that is coming with it. Right when you go into this afternoon, it's going to be gone, but we do have another pattern, remember, setting up, and this could come again. Still bringing a lot of snow going all the way until tomorrow night as it goes into Nebraska. All that pink right there is over a foot. Matter of fact, the biggest is over two feet of snow. Higher elevations of Wyoming. A lot of snowfall coming out in the Rocky Mountains. Still showing Lander and Casper, Wyoming is getting the heaviest. Maybe a little bit in Cheyenne. Denver, you're not getting at Colorado Springs. You might get a very little bit. Not a lot, guys. But it is bringing a lot of snowfall to some people. Plus rainfall all the way to Saturday with National Weather Service model. Getting a lot of rainfall. And it's still going to bring some more towards the northeast as you go all the way till Sunday morning. So there's still a lot of rainfall to come. Still showing you bring a lot of heavy rainfall as you go all the way until tomorrow morning. For South Dakota, going to northern Nebraska, southern Minnesota, northern Iowa. Tomorrow afternoon, going to Wisconsin, going to northern Illinois. And still bringing over an inch all the way till Sunday morning for eastern Ohio, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Long Island, Maryland, Delaware. A lot of people getting about an inch over there. That's about it. Maybe two inches along New Jersey. That's been trending a lot. And New Jersey was going to get hit a little bit. And you still got another one to two inches coming across for Florida as well. And this is bringing a lot of flooding, guys. For today, you do have the marsh over here for the southeast. You also have the slight risk that's building up towards Nebraska, South Dakota, and western Iowa. Now, after today, all this heavy rainfall, all this flash flooding is going to move further to the east. And this is going to last for a couple of days where you have this big marsh marginal but you got this slight risk 
of flash flooding. This is for Friday. This is for Saturday as well. But thank you so much for your time, Obi. I have a very great day today. I will update you on what's going on with this next weather pattern when it gets a little closer. That way you can get ready for those impacts as well. I appreciate every single one of y'all. Now real quick before you go on for your Thursday, I'm going to talk to you about Psalm 131. Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor mine eyes lofty. Neither do I exercise myself in great matters or in things too high for me. Surely I have behaved and quieted myself as a child that is weaned of his mother. My soul is even as a weaned child. Let Israel hope in the Lord from henceforth and forever. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. Remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I pray he always keeps you safe every single day of your life, you and your families, forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.